Hello grade 10s. This lesson covers all the basics you need to know about banking in mathematical literacy. We'll start with terminology, move on to types of accounts and how banks charge fees. We will also do calculations involving bank charges. When we think of banks, we usually think of a place where we can save our money or a place where we can borrow money with a loan. Banks have different charges or costs for different accounts and services. Understanding what these charges are and how they add up can help us decide on what bank account is most suitable for our needs. Let's start by defining a few words found in the banking terminology. Opening and closing balance are used on the bank statements and show the balance at the beginning and end of the period of time presented on the statement. Transaction fees are the costs for doing transactions on a bank account. These usually have different rates and are sometimes called bank charges. A list of these charges are found in the bank's fee structure. Payment is when money is exchanged between parties for goods or services. If a debit card is used to make a payment, the money will be transferred from the account into the account of the person or company who is being paid. A branch name and branch code are given to every branch of a bank. The name is usually the town or suburb where the branch of the bank is. A withdrawal is when money is taken out of an account by the account holder. A deposit is when money is paid into the account either in cash, checks or electronic fund transfer. Credit means money that is put into an account and usually happens when deposit is made either in cash, check or an EFT transfer. Debit means when money is taken out of the account either by a cash withdrawal or a payment. EFT is an electronic fund transfer and happens when a person transfers money using the internet either from your cellular phone or computer. Both debit orders and stop orders are methods of payment where money is deducted directly from a bank account. Debit orders are an instruction that you give an institution such as an insurance company to debit your account. The stop order is an instruction given by you to your bank to make a regular payment to an institution or someone. ATM is the abbreviation for an automated tailor machine. This machine was designed to make banking available 24 hours a day. All transactions that you would normally do inside a bank, you can do at an ATM. Transactions such as deposit, withdrawals, transfers, etc. Most bank accounts have a credit interest rate to determine their interest earned on their account. They also have a debit interest rate in the event that their account has a negative balance. These interest rates are usually known upfront. A debit card has a magnetic information strip or a chip that allows shops to access funds in an account when the card is swiped. The card can also be used to access the account at an ATM. When paying with a debit card, the buyer is only able to spend the money in their account. A credit card looks very similar to a debit card, but it is used when the buyer needs to buy using credit. In other words, the account linked to the credit card is like a loan account. These accounts usually charge more interest than other accounts. Now let's look at a savings account. These can also be called transactional accounts. Salaries can be paid into these accounts and they can be used to pay household and other expenses. Some savings accounts are designed to only be used for saving. They will usually offer higher interest rates to encourage customers to use them for longer periods. In these types of accounts, transaction fees are usually higher to encourage customers to keep their money in their account, rather than spending it. Check or current accounts do not offer much interest or low costs. They are attractive to customers because it is easy to access the funds in their account. The customer is able to pay with a debit card or using a check. 
They are also able to make use of an overdraft. This is a way to borrow money from the bank. According to the South African Bank Risk Information Center, checks are not as popular due to the high risk of check fraud. Money can be invested in various types of accounts. These accounts require a lump sum of money that is deposited for a specific period of time, and they are called fixed deposits. The interest is usually only calculated when the money is withdrawn. Banks call these accounts fixed deposit accounts, notice deposit accounts, call accounts. This means that when the customer wants to withdraw their money, they give notice that they intend withdrawing. This notice period usually defines their account. The shortest being 24-hour notice and it is called a 24-hour notice deposit account. Similarly, the 30-day call account needs 30 days notice before the money can be withdrawn. Other deposit accounts are 3 months fixed deposit accounts, 6 months fixed deposit accounts, 12 month deposit accounts. Longer terms are available but are limited to 60 months. If money is withdrawn from the account before the notice period, the account holder will pay penalties. According to certain investment guidelines in South Africa, Banks cannot offer investments for a longer period than five years. All investments with terms longer than five years require specialized financial advice. Lastly, we will look at credit card accounts. This is the account that is linked to a credit card as has been discussed earlier. It gives you credit to purchase items and to pay for services. The advantage of a credit card is that it is usually accepted by most merchants and can be used for internet and purchases made over the telephone. Credit cards can become very expensive if not managed carefully. As banks are in tight competition with each other, costs become an important factor when deciding on a bank account. This decision needs to be made based on what the account will be used for. Let's look at Sipo and his use of his account. Sipo gets the following transactions for free. One free debit order, three free cash withdrawals, four free debit card payments. He pays an account fee of 30 Rand a month. Every month, Sipo deposits his monthly salary check. He has four debit orders of 100 Rand each that are debited against his account each month. He makes four cash withdrawals at his bank's ATMs every month of 200 Rand. He uses his debit card every day for bread and milk payments of less than 100 Rand. We need to write down the costs of the account for the month. Basic cost of account of their account is 30 Rand. Deposit of salary by check costs 25 Rand. Four debit orders minus one free one leaves three at four Rand each, so that equals 12 Rand. Three of the four withdrawals are free. That means the fourth one costs four Rand. He gets four debit card transactions for free, so he will only have to pay for 26 swipes. Therefore, 26 transactions at 2 Rand each cost 52 Rand. Therefore, the total monthly cost for this account would be 30 Rand plus 25 Rand plus 12 Rand plus 4 Rand plus 52 Rand, which equals 123 Rand for the month. The method of calculating costs on any bank account is done as was shown here. Make a list of all transactions. Look for free transactions and do the calculations. Let's do one more example together. Let's look at George who deposits 1,000 Rand into a savings account at another bank's ATM. The bank will charge him a fee of 80 cents per 100 Rand. How much will he pay in total for the transaction? The first step is to find out how many hundreds are in 1,000. We divide 1,000 by 100 and find that there are 10 100 rands in 1,000 rand. That means that 
80 cents is charged 10 times, given a total charge of 8 rand. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember, the task for this section can be found in the Finance Task video. You will also be able to learn more about finance on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.